Could you give us a measured assessment of exactly how bad the situation really is? Well, at this moment in Belgium, the situation is really bad. We are about at the same situation as last year in October. That means that we have almost uh, every day now, the, the last week at least, uh, 20,000 new infections. Um, that's really not a good situation, really the worst that we had in, in, in all history. Now, the good news is that we have only half of the people on intensive care and half of the people on, uh, uh, in hospital beds. So that means that the vaccination is protecting uh, against the, 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 the severe disease. Uh, but we see that in the regions such as Flanders, where we have a very high vaccination degree, up to 80 percent, that the vaccinate that the infections are at this moment the highest. So that means that uh, uh, people who are vaccinated think that they can have more freedom than others and should not uh, uh, care about the corona measures. And that means that uh, yeah, also people with uh, who are vaccinated are infected at this moment and in fact maybe other people who are not vaccinated. So we are really um, not positive about the, the evolution of the situation in the next weeks. Well, the, the um, restrictions as they've been introduced are focused primarily on the unvaccinated. From what you're saying, it would seem that you would hope that those restrictions go a little bit further. Uh, do, do we need uh, a fire break uh, lockdown for two or three weeks, do you think? Well, the situation was never as bad that this, as it is now. Um, but we, we are not having a lockdown at this moment, mainly because the, the figures were, which are used by the government are always late. That means they are about 12 days after the real infections. The, the real figures are coming up in the, the incidence figures. So uh, that means that uh, we are really late always with, uh, with our lockdowns. And last year, with the same figures, we had a lockdown. Uh, and then even with that lockdown, it, it takes many weeks before, um, before the situation is uh, normalized in hospitals and in, at intensive care. That means that a lot of the, the healthcare uh, uh, interventions now in hospitals are to be uh, postponed at a later moment. So that's really bad. Also for people who are vaccinated, they have to wait for their normal care. And, in the hospitals because people who are not vaccinated are taking their place in the hospitals. Doug, uh, looking at various international examples, you've got the Swedish model, you've got the zero COVID New Zealand model, and then you've got the British model, which is based on a high vaccination um, rate, but of course, just letting um, higher numbers of cases go forth into the community thereafter as well. Is there a model which you think Europe should adopt, whether it's the zero COVID strategy of the New Zealanders, the Swedish model, or perhaps what the British are doing? Well, at least there should be a European model. <laughs> um, and which model that would be, maybe we can, can leave that to the, the politicians. Uh, but at least the, the countries are that small in Europe. Uh, the national borders are open and there's a great mobility of people. So that means that if you have very local um, measures, uh, well, that, that will not work in Europe. Um, so I think it, it should be a combination of vaccination, a combination of uh, uh, corona measures, eventually lockdowns, um, but not a situation as it is now where, where really there are some, some, uh, some situations where you have, when you walk at the other side of the street, there are other measures. Uh, now that does not work and people doesn't, uh, don't understand anymore what measures they should uh, uh, cope with. So I think it, it, we really need measures at the European level, not only for vaccination, but also, also for uh, uh, the, the, the measures against COVID.